Good morning, good morning, good morning. What another glorious day to serve the Lord and praise the Lord today. I'm here this morning at Visitors Chapel AME Church located in El Paso, Texas. Our address is 518 North Australia, El Paso, Texas 79903. And the pastor of our church is Reverend Calvin Alexander Sr. And he welcomes you here to our church school this Sunday morning, which we like to call BLAST, which is basic learning and spiritual training. Basic learning and spiritual training. This morning's lesson will be from the NIV version of the Bible. It'll be the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 18 through 29. That's Galatians, chapter 3, verses 18 to 29, and I'll be reading from the NIV version. I want to go ahead and give everyone a moment to go get your Bible and get your good book of the Lord and open it up to Galatians chapter 3, verses 18 through 29, and I will pause for a moment, and then after that, we will go ahead and have the opening prayer, and we'll start with our lesson. What a wonderful day to praise the Lord this morning. Okay, that should give everybody a moment to go get their, their Bible so we can go ahead and get started with our BLAST church school lesson. And BLAST stands for Basic Learning and Spiritual Training. But before we get started, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Let us bow our heads or look heavenward. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the blessings and everything that you've given to us. We thank you for the blessings that you have yet given to us, Lord. We thank you for all the abundance and everything that's been added to our lives, Lord. And we know that without you, we wouldn't be able to do everything because everything is based on you and everything comes from you. And we would be nothing without you, Lord. So we just want to say thank you so much for waking us up this morning in our right minds, giving us the activity and mobility of our limbs. And we ask this morning that you bring your spirit here into this sanctuary as we go into this church school lesson, that we all can get something from it that we can grow from. And we ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. And we ask that you continue to strengthen us. You continue to hold us. You continue to motivate us. You continue to inspire us. Dear Lord, we ask that you give us special healing and, and lay your hands on the people of Buffalo, New York this morning, Lord. That's my hometown. And I know the people of that community are hurting today, Lord. I know that they're suffering today, Lord, for a senseless act of violence that happened yesterday. Dear Lord, we know that you can heal everyone. We know that you can touch the hearts even of the perpetrator of this violent, heinous act, Lord. And I just ask that you keep the community strong, that you bring the community together, and that they can grow out of love from this, and that they can grow to be a better, stronger, more tight-knit community. One that will look after each other, dear Lord. And I ask this prayer in the powerful, magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again into the house of the Lord, and welcome once again into Visitors Chapel, AME Church, located here in El Paso, Texas. Our senior pastor is no other than the Reverend Calvin Alexander Sr., and he welcomes you here this morning as well. And I thank the pastor for giving me the opportunity to teach this Sunday school, church school lesson, which we like to call at VCAM, we like to call BLAST, because we say we're blasting off with basic learning and spiritual training to get our Sunday started. Now this morning, I'll be reading from the books of Galatians. I'll be starting at chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 18 to 29. If you have your Bible, please follow along. For if the inheritance depends on the law, 
then it no longer depends on the promise. But God, in his grace, gave it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgressions. Until the seed to whom the promise referred has come. The law was given through angels and entrusted as entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promise of God? Absolutely not. For if the law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by law. But scriptures has locked up everything under the control of sin. So that was the promise being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ. Have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs, and heirs according to the promise. That was reading the book of Galatians at chapter 3. Verses 18 to 29 from the NIV version. Brothers and sisters, today's lesson talks about freedom from the law. And when we think about the law, we don't understand that the law was initially put in place to keep us in order, to get us to abide and obey the law, to follow the law, to follow what God gave Moses in the beginning for us to follow by. That's why the law was there, for our transgressions. So we would know how to behave, and we would know how to act, and we would know how to carry ourselves. But as Christ said, he did not come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. And through Christ fulfilling the law, in the work that Christ did on the cross and Christ dying for us and Christ being buried in that borrowed tomb and God raising Christ up from the dead and Christ walking out of that tomb and ascending to heaven. Now we get that promise through our faith, through our believing. So we no longer have to follow all the laws because there was no way for us to be able to follow and adhere to all those laws. There were too many and it was too much and we would fail if we had to still follow by law. But the other thing that happened by us going away from the law and being able to have faith in Christ and believe in Christ, it also allowed us, the Gentiles, to have that same promise that the Jews have. The same promise that was given to Abraham, we are now able to have that promise because that opened it up to us as well where there was no longer a separate, it was no longer separation. So it wasn't that, oh, you're not of Jewish faith. You are not of Jewish tradition. You didn't get circumcised. You didn't keep the laws of Moses. So you can't have the promise. But through Christ, all of us, who believe in him are able to have that promise. All of us are able to have that blessing. And all of us are able to partake in that. So I'm going to read right here. 
What purpose does the law serve? What purpose does the law serve? It was added because of our transgressions. Part of the reason the law was given was to restrain transgressions of men, revealing to all of us God's holy standard. God had to give us his standards so we would not destroy ourselves before Christ was to come. There was appointed a mediator by the angels. According to ancient tradition, according to Paul, the law was delivered to Moses on Mount Sinai by the hands of angels. Angels were the go-between, the mediator between Moses and God for the law. But when Christ came, Christ became our mediator between God. Now we go through Christ as the way to get to the Father. Our mediator changed, and we are now able to have that blessing. We are not held in custody any longer. So then, is the law then against the promise of God? Certainly not. The law is not something evil opposing God's promise. Brothers and sisters, the problem with the law is found in its inability to give strength to those that desire to keep it. If the law could have given life, then it could have brought righteousness. But the law of Moses brings no life. It simply states the command, tells us to keep it and tells us the consequences if we break it. Do you see the difference there, brothers and sisters? Christ brings us life. Christ brings us to God. Christ gives us a way to God. The law just gives us the rules and the standards and what happens if we break the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to all those who believe. So the great thing about that is all of us who believe, no matter if you're white, no matter if you're black, no matter if you're Gentile, no matter if you're Jew, no matter if you're male, no matter if you're female, no matter if you're free or slave, all you have to do is have faith in Christ Jesus. That is the only requirement. And having faith, you can now have the promise that was given to Abraham. You could now have God's riches because of the work that Christ did for us. The law of Moses is our tutor. A guardian brings us to Christ. So I want you to think about it like this. The law of Moses being a tutor, when you have a tutor, a tutor is a person that gives you instruction. That's a person that teaches you. That's a person that guides you. But that's also a person that disciplines you when you do wrong. But to have that tutor is still to have someone over you. That's still to have someone that can confine you and restrict you based on a set of rules and regulations. But when you go ahead and you accept Christ and you are truly baptized into Christ and when you are finally baptized into the Christ, it's just like when you go into the water and you fully are submerged and you come out. You come out fully submerged from that water that's how we have to be baptized into Christ. We can't just dip our foot in. We can't just dip our finger in. We can't just dip a portion of our body in. We have to fully submerge ourselves in Christ. 
And when we fully submerge ourselves in Christ, we start carrying ourselves different. We start living differently. We start speaking differently. We start behaving differently. And then what comes of that is we strive every day to be more Christ-like because we're not taking a partial submersion. We're taking a full baptism of all that we are. And when we come out of that, we are now clothed in Christ. We are now covered in Christ. So there's no way that we could be confined by the old laws, the old rules, and the old ways. That's the beauty of having faith in Christ and believing in Christ and understanding that we have the same promise that was given to the descendants of Abraham. But brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm going to take it one step further. By us believing and having faith in Christ, not only do we have the same promise as the descendants of Abraham, we become those descendants of Abraham. And we have the same promise in all the lights, rights, and privileges. Because we no longer have a mediator. We no longer have rules. We no longer have somebody telling us that what Christ did for us on the cross was not enough for us. We now know that what Christ did was everything for us. And because he did that for us, we no longer have to go in between anyone else to get to the Father. We don't have to go to the pastor. We don't have to go to the priest. We don't have to go to anybody but bend our knees and confess our sins to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. That's the beauty in it. Christ has redeemed us and Christ has given us this great opportunity. But we still have free choice. We still have the choice to choose it. We still have the choice to accept it. And we still have the choice to accept Christ in our heart. Because Christ is there knocking. But are we going to let him in? Are we going to bring him into us? Are we going to sup with him and let him sup with us? Or are we going to go ahead and still be confined? by all of the restraints of the law and all of the restraints of the society and what we live in today? Or are we going to step into that promise and truly live and abide by that promise that was given, through, uh, given to us through faith in Christ Jesus? My brothers and sisters, I just want to say we have the promise. The promise is ours. We are descendants of Abraham. I'll take it a step further, brothers and sisters. We all come from one God and one creator. Black, white, yellow, male, female, slave, free, whatever. We all have the same father in heaven who sent his only begotten son here for us. And the work that he did for us was enough. We never have to doubt that is there anything extra that we need to do. Because if we could do it, then it would never be any need for the Father to send his only begotten Son here for us, brothers and sisters. So I want to go ahead and end this lesson, and I want to let you know that you do have full access to the promise, that the promise is yours. Have faith in Christ Jesus. Accept Christ Jesus. Fully submerge yourself in Christ Jesus. And be fully baptized in them. Don't just stick, stick a toe in. Don't just put your finger in. Fully submerge yourself in Christ Jesus. And you will be walking differently. You will be talking differently. You will be carrying yourself differently. My brothers and sisters, I thank you so much for tuning into our church school which here at VCAM we like to call BLAST, which is basic learning and spiritual training. I want to go ahead and I want to go ahead and, and switch the subject just for a second here. As I said in my morning prayer, I want us all to pray for the people of the community of Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York is my hometown. That home city raised me and shaped me. It helped make me the man that I am today. 
My family, the majority of them still live there. And I know that they're struggling. I know that they're having difficulties with what happened. Two words I never thought I would put in the sentence was mass shooter in Buffalo, New York. I never thought I would put that in a sentence together. But it happened yesterday. But even with all of that, I want all my family and friends and everybody to watch and to know that God is still in control. God is still on the throne. And his son, Jesus Christ, said he will leave the comforter here for us. That he will leave the Holy Spirit here for us. And it is here for us. And it will help comfort all of you through this time of tragedy, through this pain, through this difficult chapter in the history of Buffalo, New York. I want all of you to know that I will continue to be praying for everyone there, that I love all of you there, and I support what every one of you are doing out there. And we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that when it comes to Christ, Christ don't care if you're white, Christ don't care if you're black, Christ don't care if you're Asian. In the eyes of Christ, we're all equal, we're all the same, we're all brothers and sisters, and we're all his children. So let's come together and let's show the world what the people of Buffalo, New York are truly about and who we truly are. Now, my brothers and sisters, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us come here this morning and praise you as always and learn more about your word and learn more about your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for giving us the ability to get up, be in our right mind and have the activity and mobility of our limbs. Lord, sometimes we forget how strong we are. We forget the strength that you give us, Lord. But right now, Lord, please bring your healing graces to Buffalo, New York and heal that community, Lord. That there be no retaliation, that there be no hate, that people could approach this in a way that will go ahead and represent you and represent what you are about. That we could make meaningful change in the hearts and minds of those that want to do evil and that want to hurt each other. That we could introduce those people to your son and teach them about your son and how he saves and saves all alone. Dear Lord, I ask this prayer in the powerful, magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we have concluded our church school lesson. But if you'd like to make a donation to our church school, you could do so at this time. You can go to Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com and type in Visitors Chapel, El Paso, Texas, and you'll see our church logo. And in the memo section, you can say, this is for church school. You can also go to Cash App, which is dollar sign V-C-A-M-E-E-L-P-A-S-O 915. And you'll see a beautiful picture of our church. And in the memo section there, you can put in for church school. Or if you still like to do it the traditional way, using the U.S. Postal Service, you can mail that gift or donation to 518 North Australia, El Paso, Texas, 79903. And one of our stewards, trustee, or church secretary will make sure that that donation gets to our church. Brothers and sisters, we thank you so much for being here with us for our church school. Once again, the pastor of our church is the Reverend Calvin Alexander Sr. And he thanks you for coming here to our church school, which we like to call BLAST, Basic Learning and Spiritual Training. I'm Brother McDuffie, and may God continue to bless you all. And don't forget to tune back in at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time for our church service. You're going to hear a powerful, motivational, inspiring, encouraging word, and you do not want to miss it. May God bless you.